you want to release an awesome house as fast as you possibly can and watch the guest and cookie counts rise and rise until you reach the number one spot? Well, it all has to start somewhere, and that involves coding your house with so many new actions. Psst. I just released a video going over the update. It can be very time consuming to painstakingly add hundreds of conditionals, and let's not even talk about debugging. Well, someone by the name of I'm a doofus. Yes, that's his actual name. Created Housing Editor. A web, cloud-based. Yes, like the clouds up there that aren't there, but should be there. Don't ask. Allowed you to create actions faster than ever possible before. This took the housing community by storm. Housings were created at lightning speeds, both quality and trash ones. Come if you want to get married. And who goes to housing to play a janky survival map? Like, come on, Hypixel created Hypixel SMP for a reason. Not for something like this. Like, bro. And then Buster Brown came in. This dude is like, okay, do this. I don't like to block your prisons here, buddy. Me likes words. And voila, HTSL is born. Goodbye, blocks. Goodbye, web editor. Hello, Visual Studio Code. And then there were two. Is one better than the other? Are blocks easier to work with? Is HTSL harder to set up? This is where the heat began to rise and the debate strengthened. This is where we will start in today's video. Let's first begin with Housing Editor. The reason not being because it's better or worse than the other, but because it was the original, the OG. That brings me to my main point, not to be biased to one side, but to help you choose based on your needs. Now, Housing Editor has many pros as well as many cons. So let's get started with its pros. So its first pro is that it's cloud-based. You can go on your laptop, your MacBook, anything that has a web browser, view your actions, easily share them. You can access on any computer, that's basically it. And then all actions that are possible are visible on the screen, which I have this little thing set up to show you. You can view all the lobbies in case you don't know, like who knows Warlords exists. And then there's the potion effects. What if you don't know if Withers in 1.8.9? Because what if a potion effect was just added in 1.8 and you don't know it's in 1.8? A list like this can make it a lot easier. And then for the sounds, well, just look at this sound list yourself. Even if some of them are not in 1.8 and they're just here for some reason. Yeah, don't ask. And then there's also the enchantments list, the inventory slot to easily see the numbers, and finally, you can customize your items to use. You can do the item name and its type and its lore, which is the text under the name. You can do enchantments, flags, like you can with the slash edit, and same for unbreakable. And housing editor also has a very easy to use item editor where you can do on right click and you can change its on item right click and add values and then import it into another housing editor. And next is there's three simple buttons, a yellow copy, and you can easily paste it into your game, a red edit to edit your title, tags, description, and a save button. Easy to do, save, copy, paste, voila, your action is imported. And some actions have tooltips explaining what to do, like send a lobby, it says in the tooltip, send player to the specified lobby. Apply potion effect, it tells you this applies a potion effect to a player, and the max is 2592000. That many seconds is actually 30 days, so your potion effects, they can last up to 30 days, so you don't even need to worry about reapplying it. And it's mainly great for beginners with no prior experience and easy to get into, but we cannot go without saying this very, very amazing thing Housing Editor has. When you go to the text, which this is a little side block with its puzzle piece opening to where you can attach it to like action bar and chat messages, so instead of typing in an anvil in-game, that's what this axe is. And right now it just says hello world. It gives you the list of all the colors and like bold and that stuff, which is what you would already know if you join my discord. I have a simple color codes command on it, so I recommend joining so you can always see it. But anyway, there's also a font. It can take a while to find a font website, but you just go straight up to housing editor and guess what? There's upside down, superscript, small caps, circled, and fancy text. Each of them has its own uses and disadvantages. Like the small caps, when you do it capital, it's just regular capital. And Housing Editor currently has this weird bug where once you do a thing, it just kind of is hard to read. So I highly recommend typing it out first, like in regular font before you add anything else to it. And there's also placeholders. It tells you all the placeholders. You click OK. You edit it. It's as simple as that. 
And finally, the most best feature in all of Housing Editor is the simple housing compatible symbols menu. It has many different icons that you can use in your house, including, I don't know why there's a blank spot, but back to the point, I only recently found out about this and I don't know what I would do if this didn't exist. There is some symbols that are not in this menu that you can use, but these are ones that you'd actually want to use and not just random shapes. Now that's a ton of good news, but we cannot do it without the cons. It's cloud-based. Did I say that in the pros? Yeah, yeah I did. But the servers, if the servers go down at any point in time, guess what? You cannot access your housing editor code. You cannot edit it. You cannot do anything to it. And a large amount of code creates a ton of lag. And it's hard to find different actions. Even though they are organized through like parkour or miscellaneous, it can still become pretty tedious to find the action you're looking for, especially with no search. But most importantly, it's one thing that needs to be changed. The dark theme is not default. Now dark theme is mostly supported, but I will say some of the colors in the dark theme could be changed to look better. And another con is it can be limiting to advanced users. And lastly, the one you mentioned earlier when you have like long, long text inside of this text box, it glitches out when you're editing it. So there you have it boys, that's Housing Editor's pros and cons, and this proves what can be good can also have some major, major flaws to it. Anyways, time for its successor, HTSL. HTSL, the one that's more native to your computer, and more like your pet. The one where all you do is type a command slash ct files and you can find everything there. And with that, you end up right about here with all of your HTSL files. All your HTSL files are saved across it. So that means you can access all of your files throughout all of your houses by just going to CT files. Now we need to go to its pros, which I would consider that a really good pro. So if I open the default, it gives you an example about most of what these are. Or in this testing, you can see everything. So some pros is that it's locally based on your PC. You can have a really, really large code and no lag at all. You can easily copy and paste large amount of text. So if I want to cut and paste all of this whole document, super easy. And it runs in a reliable code editor, Visual Studio Code, which we'll talk about more if you put in the comments below. If you want to see a HTSL installation guide with, with a lot of extra bonus stuff that you're not going to see in this video. If you want to see that, tell me in the comments below. Well, seems like even Buster Brown really wishes us luck with these sound names. And with your fast typer or not, you can still produce code amazingly fast in Visual Studio. You can organize code better with better comments, which comments are available in Housing Editor, but just aren't used as often as they're a bit more tedious. And an extension in VS Code to color your code. For example, if I'm typing out a condition, if is flying, it'll auto-complete it, then stat test ink one. Now this is just an example, this is not the correct syntax for conditionals, so do not base this off, but I just wanted to demonstrate the autocomplete. And most importantly, let's go back inside of the game. So as you can see, I have my little housing menu. I can actually go do slash htsl save item housing menu, and it'll save it as a .json file. So if I go back into slash ct files, I can very well see the housing menu.json file. And when I open it, it has the item with its ID, and you can easily reference it when giving items. Now for advanced users, there's also this really awesome feature that is nowhere. Let me say this again, nowhere to be seen in housing editor. So let's say all of this code above here, I'm going to import it into an event action. So when I go to event actions, I go to the event action I want to import it, the location inside of housing, and it import this, and then it finishes importing. But what if I want there to be more code? Like let's say I want this rest of the code to be on a different function. So what I do is I do this special command called go to function, and then the name of the function, so main. And then the rest of these actions that I put here will be for the function. And I can do this as many times as I want. You can do this for event actions, commands, main command, and import the rest of the code into commands. And one of the last pros that I have, and yes, this is a big mouthful of pros, I have to show you in-game. Okay, so now that I'm in-game, if I do slash HTSL GUI default, you do not enter .htsl, then you just do the name, and you can actually edit in the game. So here it is, the text editor. 
Now it's a bit hard to use as you can't really scroll, but it's great for quick testing. Like if you want, if you want to test a give item, you can easily do that here. Or you did a typing error, you can just change it real quick. But this isn't good for like long and advanced code. But this is awesome for quick edits and really changes the way you will be developing your house. Pros were so awesome, they're gonna outweigh all the cons most likely, but we gotta say them anyway. So here we go. Now a con is that it's local, only accessible on the PC, which is a con since if you are on a laptop or another computer, you won't be able to access it, but most likely you are not gonna be on another computer, but it's still noteworthy. And I think it's a major downside. You cannot publish the code unless you go to like the Action Library and High Essentials, which is a new housing resource pack mod, whatever you wanna call it. Yeah, it's a mod, I'm just dumb, which it's gonna come out later this year. I'm pretty sure, but don't count me on that. There's no visible sound list, potion list, enchanting list, lobby list, etc. when you're typing in VS Code, and it's not for beginners, as there's a lot of advanced things, like the go-to. Would a beginner know that existed? No. Would a beginner know that HTSL helped me? Would they know to do this? They probably wouldn't. So it's really not for complete beginners, but once you're past the beginner stage, this is a must. So now you're an expert on both of the editors, which means you know both sides of the argument, so it's finally time to make the final verdict. But before we decide on the final verdict, I have a couple more things to say. Both of them have updated to support the latest features, as we talked about in the video, so they're both good in that retrospect. And both of them have everything you can possibly need to create a successful house. Not one is gonna stop you from creating that one wool tycoon or the next parkour sim version 7 and lastly if you want to see for yourself how to install chat triggers do slash ct files put housing editor master in there after unzipping it deleting the dash master all that complicated stuff like importing axios and vigilance both editors need them but they should already be installed for yourself for a more in-detail guide about how to install housing editor be sure to check out my guide that I already released. But if you want to see the HTSL guide, tell me in the comments below. Anyways, it's time for the final verdict. And my personal preference is... The one, the only, HTSL. But hey, don't go yet. This does not mean you should go and use HTSL just because I said to. Both have their pros and cons, with Housing Editor more for beginners, but it still has its really, really handy features. But don't fret, a major overhaul of Housing Editor is in the works. And I'll be sure to definitely make a bit about that, or video once that releases, or my current schedule a couple months after it releases. Anyways, thanks for watching yet another one of my tutorials. Without your support of liking and subscribing this video, I could not have helped in abundance of housing creators both new and experienced. Well, see you in the next one. Peace.